Delicious. Welcome back to episode 29 of the WPD podcast. We are again missing a Kelly. She is up to her eyeballs in, as per usual, doing a million and one things all at once. So she yeah. has had to bow out. But we have the lovely Amy Meredith on as our guest. So, Amy, tell us a little bit about yourself. Go for it. Well, how much time have you got? <laughs> <laughs> well, start off with what you know what got you into bodybuilding how long have you been bodybuilding so for me I started I think I did my first show I've been trying to remember I think I did my first show it was either 2012 or 2013 um so Mm. a good 10 11 years ago now and the first I don't know if you guys remember but body power did this show called fit factor did you ever I think that yeah that definitely (laughs) rings a bell for sure yeah. yeah so that was my first show um, back when I was like a bikini slash fitness model type, that's the route I was kind of going down. Yeah. Um, and then I did quite a few shows as like fitness model for a few years with Miami Pro. Turns out I'm not a fitness model. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any Welsh person person has said that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't know, I think Kelly would agree. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> so so yeah so I knocked that on the head quite swiftly um and then I took a year off and then I came back into figure in 2016 I did NABBA Wales that was my first time doing figure and I absolutely just fell in love with it fell in love with it and I knew in that show although I was absolutely shit I knew that that was the category that I wanted to kind of grow into and um and try and develop and 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 progress in and, and the rest is history, really. You know, I did a bit of, I did NABRA a few times, did take about 18 months out from, I think it was like 2016 until 2018, mm. just the mental health um, issues I was dealing with. But um, so that I've just, from 2018 onwards, I kind of just slowly, a few ups and downs, but slowly progressed. And then from yeah. 2021, I feel like I've started to sort of get my stride with it now. And, yeah. and now I'm just fucking obsessed with it. <laughs> Yeah, so, it has nothing wrong with being obsessed with with bodybuilding, you know. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so when um, you went from um, when you went from obviously like the fitness kind of Miami Pro stuff, and then into yeah. figure, did you have a period of time off to grow into figure, or did you just kind of be like, just want to see how it goes, and then go from there? So, so yeah, I'd say I, I took off. I think it was probably about twelve to fifteen months. Okay, but it wasn't. It wasn't like an off. So, me and off seasons I basically would get off stage and I just get really really fat and just yeah. eat a load of shite <laughs> <laughs> I possibly could and then have to yeah. diet like an absolute animal to try and yeah. get the weight back off and come in looking emaciated and that was yeah. kind of how my mm-hmm. bodybuilding life sort of went um, so there was was it fair to say there wasn't like a structure to your off season yeah absolutely never was and for a lot of it I didn't work with I'd sort of get somebody to help me with prep but it was kind of that was that would be it and then I'd take take the reins back and sort of oh I can do this but this is just eating yeah yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. obviously as we know it is absolutely not the case yeah um but during the time in between sort of the transition from fitness model across to, to figure I did sort of take a little bit of a step backwards in regards to training and things because my mum wasn't very well and it was just a really difficult kind of 12 months there mm. um, we had a pandemic as well didn't we <laughs> So yes, yeah, because so, yeah, then that came then afterwards as well, just to throw a spam yeah. over it. So, yeah. yeah, it's um whilst I say I've been competing for like 10 years, it's been very up and down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah um, but yeah, I took a little bit of time off. So I did come back with a little bit more tissue on me um when I did figure, but you know, it was toned figure. I didn't really have the condition anyway. Um mm-hmm. I could never they- bring in my lower body, that was always the issue. Yeah, because do does NABBA do, I don't really know much about NABBA, does it do like what PCA do where it's like trained, athletic toned, or do, like how do they yeah. do it? So now they do, back when I first, no, I think they brought athletic in, so it used to be just toned and then trained, okay. and that was your only options, and then I think athletic came in round about 2015, 2016, that yeah. NABBA brought athletic figure in and now you've got all three of the categories yeah um so when I competed with NABBA twice once in 2016 once in 2018 did tone figure both years mm. like there was no way I was athletic anyway you know I, my, my lower half had zero conditioning and my yeah. top half was practically emaciated so yeah. Yeah. it was kind of like <laughs> <laughs> I certainly wasn't athletic there wasn't the tissue kind of there for that but um 
but yeah, that's now they've got the three categories. I think is good because um, I think you need that bridge. I think it's too much of a jump yeah, yeah. from tone across the cross. I was, was going to say it's very. It that seems like really strange to have tone to then. Bam, straight yeah. train. Because like you did train, right? Train. Before um, yeah, so I did yeah. train back in 2018. That was my first show of PCA. And I tried athletic, but then just got moved up because I was way yeah. too conditioned. You, but, you would yeah, have been against they, me if you'd you know, done athletic. Yeah, I would have been. Yeah, I would have been. Yeah, that's a good actually, point. No, actually, yeah. That show I did toned figure and I probably should have done athletic. Ah, uh, okay. But yeah, and like to, to think that there would have been that, that Nabba just did toned and trained, like the difference yeah. in the two, even though they're both figure, like it's still but a they, massive leap in between, you know? Yeah. They're like apples and oranges, aren't they? You know, like it's, yeah. it's, it's no, there is absolutely no way that you can say, oh, you're borderline trained if you're toned. Absolutely yeah, no, no, no way. You're one or the other. Yeah. You know, no, so, um, so whilst I think it's good that athletic has come in, in my opinion, there's still too much of a grey area surrounding kind yes. of what they've expected. Yeah. Um, so I've taken a couple of different looks to athletic. And with, I know, like feedback I had back last year in athletic figure was I was borderline trained and in a softer category, I'd be moved, which scared the shit out of me because I was like, well, I haven't got the condition to be in trained. I've, I haven't brought the condition in for that so yeah I didn't want to go into shows thinking oh I may or may not be moved depending on the lineup that I'm in yeah um sometimes you see girls coming in that are holding more tissue that are a bit fuller then you're seeing girls coming in that are more conditioned and it's very difficult to know what exactly athletic figure is is at the minute it's, I think you know yeah it also seems yeah. recently that it seems to be like no one doing toned or athletic like looking at the recent PCA stuff it seems that um that there's like two or three girls in it I just don't I don't really know what's happened to that side of things in the PCA realm of things yeah well, it's really you, you tend to see them coming out later in the year with PCA I find uh, okay. with, uh, yeah, yeah. with the southwest at the weekend I'm just trying to find the um if they did do I know they did one of them um they did athletic figure but yeah. that's the only one but it was yeah. really strange, and this is nothing against the woman that won the athletic figure category, but the trained bikini athlete was harder and leaner mm-hmm. than the woman that won, they both won the overalls, but the woman yeah. that won in athletic figure, I'd say she was more toned figure than athletic figure. It was, it's quite... Yeah. yeah. Trained, it's hard to know what to do. Harder. Well, the funny yeah. thing is, this is what I heard from someone the other day is trained bikini is for the girls that are like a figure esque style physique, but they don't want to do a routine. So you just bung them into trained figure. That's what I've heard. Because really? if you like, yeah, if you look at some of these trained bikini girls, they are just gnarly. Like they are like oh, yeah. trained figure esque. Yeah. yeah. But apparently, yeah, like if these girls don't want to do a routine, then just bung them in trained bikini, apparently. Whether that's okay. true or not, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I don't it's know. interesting yeah. yeah yeah I've never truly understood you know the whole what I said what what exactly is it that they like what are the criteria for these things and I said because I've seen it we've got these trained bikini girls coming in looking absolutely peeled to the bone yeah again like well like you just said an athletic figure girl who I'd expect the condition to be harder there than I would yeah on bikini yeah. you know it's really really quite confusing for mm. me i don't understand bikini very much anyway to be honest yeah. you know like no we we don't either <laughs> <laughs> i don't it's not a category i could ever advise on because i genuinely i'm not yeah you know, i'm not really 100 percent on that but i mean even yeah, even it's... like bikini itself like i think i saw someone from pca the other day who wasn't trained bikini and she was like capped off like her shoulders were super capped she was relatively yeah. lean like like what bikini used to be to what it is now going to be and what it could be in the future is is mad like it's the physiques are becoming harder they're becoming more capped like it's so now you're questioning whether okay is bikini more of that realistic look that people can get naturally or whatever to okay now these girls are getting harder and harder so where is that line between bikini and it's just it's mad like i I think no hate to bikini girls or whatever but like it's trying to find that line between okay, is this what they want in bikini or are they looking for something else? It's always quite difficult to coach someone from bikini because you just yeah, don't know. Yeah, I can what... imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Mad. But the thing it's is, you're seeing this sort of evolution of physiques across all female categories. You know, they, they bang this drum if they want us to stay feminine. They want us to sort of, you know, oh, staying feminine is a really big thing. Yeah, but you're, you're increasing, you're, you're asking us to bring these monstrous physiques. Figure has gone yeah. ridiculously mm-hmm. huge. 
Mm. Like I'm looking at figure girls and I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, you're going to dwarf me, you know? Yeah. And you just, yeah. you're seeing like your, your, your Olympian figure girls, for example, who for me, I'm like half of them would be physique. Yes. Because they're and just monsters. If you actually look, yeah, the muscle mass is there, but when you actually look at the figure pros and, and having done a couple of figure pro shows, mm. the muscle mass is there, but the condition there's looks like you're softer is it yeah there's when you're actually up close to them the striations yeah. aren't there or shouldn't be there no. in their glutes um and their their hams their sort of posterior chain should be softer and right. like in that lineup i stuck out like a sore thumb because my glutes were like properly in and then, like all the others weren't um, yeah looking at the other top 10 figures they were a lot softer Mm. So right, okay. that balance between you know getting them hard as nails and getting them in condition and then filling them right up so those striations don't actually show through as much yeah um it is it's i think figures becoming very very tricky to get right oh completely yes. agree completely agree mm, mm. and then okay. again you'll turn up at a show and you're like well that one's hard as nails and that one's a little bit softer but that one's one and that ah, i'm so confused yeah yeah, yeah. it's mad. You just it you, you mad. never really know what to bring do you um no. it's like i felt every every show last year we tried we tried different things and we tried to bring me in looking either a little bit tighter or like for the universe we blew me out with as much food as we possibly could and um again with different looks that we've done with like npc you know we've like then we did last year i think i came in less full but a little bit tighter and then this year we sort of kept the condition a little bit softer but blew me out and but you just don't really know what to do because then the judges yeah. feedback said well come in a bit tighter okay but if I do that then you award somebody softer so yeah yeah you, go, you know it's um it is very very tricky like I, I know for myself me and Rob have always said we take the look that we like for us who is your name Rob Graham so he's South Wales based um so we've always just said <clears throat> you know I've got to be happy with the look it's going to be something that we want to present hopefully one day it's what they want but if it's not you know i'm happy enough taking you know as i feel like we fall into the criteria enough i don't feel like mm. i'm you know um coming in too hard or you know you can question if i'm figure or not i think i do fit into the criteria best i can but mm. it's very bloody difficult because you just don't know what to bring really yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's mad it is mad so how to talk about the season that you just had so did yeah. you win all your show like how many shows did you do this year so i've done two so far i did the kingdom and the ben weeder overall yeah. Of both. um yeah it was good it was like i only had a short prep for that so i think my prep in total only lasted about 14 weeks um oh, okay so so far like i'm not like i'm not done yet they will be more later in the year so i didn't want to burn out obviously yeah. i knew the numbers weren't going to be there the beginning of the year because they yes. never are the ben weeder what was there that was because i watched it was, that it was, so two, was in, in, two in the overall there was just three or four over like in the division because there was some that didn't do um a win in my category there was two of us in the overall mm. can't remember exactly how many but obviously they weren't enough for the pro card so um oh, you know, frustrating you, it is it is but i knew that was going to happen you know so it's yeah. like, well, I'm not going to burn myself out and fuck myself now. Mm. I'll, I'll yeah. you know, did you use it off a little bit and I'll come in later in the year at some point, I'm sure. Yeah. Did you send your photos off to the IFBB? Yes. What? Oh, is that a loaded yeah. button? Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it's, it's a no at the moment. Um, oh, I'm not surprised because the quality of the photos, I, they, I look like a gold statue for one. <laughs> so I don't feel like, <laughs> <laughs> you can't, if you if you have a look, you know, go my Instagram. They posted, and then you can't see detail. You can't really see much of anything on them. I look very wet, so I I don't feel I don't feel they rep like that. They actually do you um, justice. Betrayed me properly, anyway. Yeah, I thought it was a, a long shot. To be honest, I didn't feel like I was quite there yet. Um, yeah, but, you know, yeah. You try, isn't it? Yeah, um, like did did, did they directly negative. say that it, it was it was a no because of that very reason or no? So they just there was a couple of little reasons, um, you know, that they sort of gave. Um, just mainly just, it was just like, oh, uh, this time is going to be no, but you know, yeah. you can work on X, Y, and Z, and yeah. hopefully some more pro qualifiers. And you know, it's a bit of a stab in the mm. stab in I the chest, you know, yeah. because you 
could just think to yourself, oh, you know, I'm not good enough. And you could almost say, oh, well, I won't bother anymore. Um, but for me, it was, if, if I was, if I ever turn pro, I don't want to do it on an email. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I want that moment. I want to be stood on stage. I want, I want it to happen properly. So if anything, it's actually been a blessing because yeah. I get to come back, bring something better and, and, and keep pursuing it and doing it how I, you know, the way that I enjoy doing it. So, yeah. Yeah. And there's like, you know, and like as competitive as we all are, there's nothing better than knowing that you've beaten five other women to get to the pro card. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. Obviously, we're all, we're all sisters and iron, but there's nothing better than being like, oh, I'm good enough to actually be a good amount yes. of women. And getting handed that pro card on stage is like, a, it's like the best feeling in the world. So, just, I, I'm a very firm believer in things happen for a reason. And yeah, I think, completely. you know, that email, as, as disheartening as it may have been, it's for a reason. And I think, you know, in the near future, very soon, Amy, because even though you had 14 weeks prep, you looked fucking unbelievable. Oh, so, thank you so much. Yeah. So, thank like, it, it, it will come. Just, yeah. just keep, it's, keep, it's, keep it's doing what you're doing. You know, I've been going for 10 years and I never, in, I, I gotta be honest, I never once thought I'd even stand on a stage and put myself in a position where I'd even be trying to, to sort yeah. of turn pro. Yeah. Um, let alone you know actually be you know if the last 18 months have been a whirlwind they've gone better than I ever imagined I've done better than I ever thought I would yeah um, yeah I, you know it blows my mind sometimes that that I've I've had some of the achievements that I've had so like I love the pursuit I love doing this I don't do it for you know okay the winds are always nice but it goes deeper than that I think for for people like like us yeah, you know, yeah. it's yeah. just about those wins is it you know so for me if I turn pro one day, amazing. I'd love to compete in the pro leagues. Of course, I bloody would. Who wouldn't? It's like a dream for all of us. But mm. if I don't, well, I'll just enjoy the, the pursuit anyway. You know, it's, yeah. this is I the bit that we love. There's there's a lot of focus, isn't there? On, and it's easy for Zara and I to say, but there is this, this massive focus on turning pro. And mm-hmm. like people that have done a show are like yeah I'm gonna go for my pro card it's yeah 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 and you're a bit like how about you try some more shows yeah give it a not, minute <laughs> not gonna trip and fall it's it's especially like for the bigger muscular categories it takes time yeah it's just the way it is and this constant pursuit of like you know doing a show going into a an off season for three months and doing another show and expecting to get a different result it's just yeah yeah i know and you also see it's like you know like oh i'll do one show oh i came third oh i'm not gonna do it anymore then because this is bollocks so no (laughs) like i came i I came like deadpan last for years you just gotta keep going yeah yeah exactly Um, that's it it, 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 it's there's more to it than just oh i'm gonna diet down for 16 weeks and then i'm gonna go and win all the shows no you're not babes because there are sort of levels it's, it's like playing Mario almost. You know, there's levels you've got to get to before you get to the big boss. You've got, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you've, got to, you've got to earn it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Plus, like, you've also got to realise, like, okay, so what's next? So you win your pro card. Are you actually that, are you actually going to be that competitive in pro ranks? Like, yeah, exactly. there's some people, like, recently I saw someone who wanted to be a 212 IFBB pro and they're, like, tiny. And you're, like, you stood next to people who looked like, you know, like Jordan Gomez, who's just turned pro. Yeah, yeah. And like, just like other people in this country who are two on two, like Dean as well. And imagine standing up against those two lads that are considerably uh, bigger than this, what than this person who wants to turn pro. And you're like, what are you going to do? Like, you're going to take a five, six year off season. Like by that time, there's going to be a, a fuck ton of new pros. Yeah. Through, and you're not going to even, you're going to be less competitive than if you jumped in now. No, exactly. And like, people just need to understand that you need to, un- like, yeah, people that enjoy the process will be will, obviously you'll be upset without winning a pro card but you'll be like right okay back to drawing board like yeah. my time isn't now but it will, it, come. It will because come you're not yeah. necessarily constantly chasing that pro card you love the process and a pro card is a byproduct of that process yeah so it's just a lot of people it's the same like social media and stuff nowadays like people just want a pro card so they can post it on their fucking grid to be like i've got a yeah and then never come and then again. Take, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. it takes you know, six seven years off still not gonna be competitive and then they'll just put it in the put it in the teeth like it's just <laughs> people just need to be realistic yeah. you know so it's something i'm like massively passionate about not because i'm necessarily a pro but like you see people who get these pro cards and deny other people who are probably more better like probably more competitive in a pro season than yeah. they ever were like you know when people get pro cards and they just 
don't compete after they're like oh yeah i just want my pro card but i'm retiring now yeah but you've just taken that away from someone who actually wants yeah. to be a pro yeah 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 you know i mean it, i've it's seen all... that way too often yeah all, it's all very well putting on your instagram bio and using it to like boost your coaching but like you say that's somebody that may have wanted to be utterly competitive yeah exactly. Yeah, and that's just it, isn't it? You know, it's um, and it all comes back to people just doing things for the wrong reasons with it. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. um, ev- everything these days just seems to be about insta likes, you know, and it's, it's I said for some it is more than that, yeah. you know, and like I said for me, I'd it'll happen when when I'm good enough, and that's mm. how I've got to look at it because I do plan on competing as yeah. pro if yeah. the time comes, if if I'm ever granted that opportunity. So I need to have a physique that is already, don't get me wrong, coming in as a rookie, I'm probably going to get my ass handed to me on a regular basis while I'm sort of building up through the ranks. Mm. But I want to be in a position where they don't look and go, what the cheese and hell's that on the stage to the bear with them? Like, mm, yeah. you know, I want yeah. to at least hold my own in the lineup. So, you know, if it takes me another couple of years, well, so be it, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly. That's and all that's going to be... And sometimes you need to create more more density to that muscle that's the yeah. something i've like had quite a lot of conversations about it's like well, I'm chasing 40 and when when i first started competing in my head i was like well i'm going to be done by the time i'm 40 and now i'm like yeah. well, that's only two and a bit years away and <laughs> it's close <laughs> yeah actually there's there's a lot of women you know mid 40s late 40s yeah. 50s that are still yeah competing and smashing it because of that mus- muscle maturity you yeah. can't it's just years on this planet that you can't totally. you can't force that on you have you because have you seen some of the females that are doing this masters olympia they're absolutely mental like Mad. mental yeah like yeah, it's, it's incredible just... shapes you know like we yeah. just get better as we get older females like, we're opinion. like a fine wine we really are <laughs> yeah, we're like a little um I don't even know a fine wine. What is it like? A what's what's a what's a wine? I guess you could have like a merlot. We were like merlot. <laughs> when, yeah, one that's been in a cellar and all covered in dust. Yeah, Mm-mm. just trying to get the um, Masters Olympia list. Yeah, yeah. Trying to find which oh. page it was put on, and I can't. To be fair, someone actually asked us a question about it and said, "What are our thoughts on the Masters Olympia lineup?" I know I've um, seen. I thought it was. That's okay. (laughs) (laughs) To be fair, Ivy Hine and Tanya, I've I've competed against Tanya and Ivy, I'd followed for a while. And they're both like, Tanya's just, I think Tanya's, I don't know how old she is, but she's just a dense human being. And to see, to be able to see her to do the Masters Olympia is like super badass. And then Ivy, I think, because how old is the Masters? Over 40? So I think, yeah, I think they have to be over 40 for this one. Oh, uh, okay, because yeah. it was 45, but they lowered it, didn't they? Yeah. Well, this is... Because they've got I... um, Je- Jessica Ray's... Um, I can't see her name, but yeah. she's, uh, she's doing it. She's down for figure. Oh. And she's done the... And I, I, can they do the normal Olympia as well? I, I don't know what... Yeah. yeah, they must be able to. I, yeah. thought, I thought it was over 35, because Babs Kiss and I had a conversation about it last year. Where she was mm. like, "Oh, next year, I think I'm going to do some of the masters figure categories because I'll yeah. be." Old. And I was like, "Oh fuck, I'm old enough already." But because <laughs> one of my potential yeah. shows is going to be Euro Masters in Italy in November. Yeah, because they've got they've got over thirty fives. Oh, oh, Veronica's doing it as well. <laughs> found the list. Yeah, oh, yeah found it. <laughs> got the list. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah, yeah, it's huge as well. There's loads of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna yeah, be a good Because um, what date is it? Is it August? Um, uh, Romana, that one's on you. <laughs> <laughs> it just says Masters Olympia 2023, and then something about Romania BT Arena. Oh, okay. It's interesting that hey. it's in Romania. That's a weird. One, yeah. Yeah. I would have thought that would have been in the states. To be fair. Yeah, I was yeah. quite surprised to see that it was going to be this side of the planet. Strange. <laughs> strange. Very strange. But it should be a good show, nevertheless. To be yeah, honest. I think yeah. it'll be monstrous. Imagine it if Dana Lynn that. Bailey did that show. That'd be Oh, my God. God. Yeah. Oh, I fly. I fly there. Yeah. We all be like, no. <laughs> yeah. Fangirling. Don't trip. 
Oh, she should. She should, shouldn't she? Imagine that comeback. Yeah. Oh my god, that'd just be epicness, wouldn't it? It would, yeah. But hey, would she would she be big enough for WPD now? <laughs> no way. Yeah, no I don't way. think she was the second year that she that she did, because you had some monsters when the, the year she came the second Yeah, because it was I can't even remember her name. It was something Malakan, wasn't it? That's it. Yeah, Juliana. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Bang on. Um, yeah, I was uh, too busy up to my eyeballs in CrossFit then. <laughs> Not saying CrossFit anything. Wanker. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know bodybuilding existed. Yeah. Madness. But yeah, we can come back around to like the development of a category. If you look at like women's physique when Dana Lynn Bay was on stage, it's literally like, a, well, I wouldn't say a big bikini but it's like it's not even figure really is it no no the figure girls would dwarf her now yeah but like if you think about that year so the year that she won physique and like your figure girls was like i think the winner was nicole wilkinson mm, mm, and yeah. she because like she was what i used to base my figure look off and yeah tiny now <laughs> crazy isn't it it's, it's just it's crazy enough. it's mad, it it's mad. so have you have you always been sporty amy like have you always done sport or yeah no, not no, not really. I was a equestrian girl, me. So I grew up, uh, grew up with the horses for years. I played a little bit of netball in school. Uh, I just realised what you like, said. I thought you said I was a questioning girl when I grew <laughs> up. I was like, uh, well, well, I'm uh, that, uh, and that as well. <laughs> so it's up to me. Old ears for you. Yes, yeah. No, I was more of like you know oh, my mom knows everything now so if she was to ever listen to this it's not gonna matter <laughs> but, but i was one of the ones smoking down the woods you know I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. yeah having a cheeky spliff up the lane or something you know that was yeah. me in school i wasn't so much for yeah. <laughs> but um yeah no I, I did a little bit of a little bit of netball things in school but i was never really sporty horses was my thing yeah. um still sporty though yeah, yeah, I suppose it is to some to some it's still, extent. It's still, it's still physical. A physical. Yeah, it's yeah. still ex- you know, like when you're chugging around on a 600 kilo beast that you've got to try and control. It is definitely um, an element of strength and stuff required for it. Having one sat on a horse and nearly been killed several times by my stepmom, it is not easy. <laughs> Yeah, one of my yeah. um, one of my mates used to do um, dressage. She was quite like high up in the ranks and. And you, I used to, you like watch dressage, you think, what in the hell are they doing? But the the manipulations from the rider just through their, their legs yeah. is mad. Like you could just watch them looking like sitting on a horse. Yeah. But what they're doing with their uh, legs is mad. It's cra- it is crazy. It's all literally in your seat and everything. Your hands barely move. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it is just all little little taps and moving your legs back and forth. The horse is curving and it's, yeah, it's very skilled. But I was never that good. <laughs> I could stay on <laughs> I remember my stepmom and I went out for a ride one day before I drove back to London. And I got in the car straight afterwards, drove all the way from Dorset to Fleet, which is like two and a half hours, literally fell out the car at Fleet because like everything had just seized up. Just like... <laughs> yeah, just still in that seated position, aren't you? Like, yeah. <laughs> still like <laughs> gripping onto the steering wheel for dear life as if it's the reins. We're going out. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's, it's definite skill to it. I don't even know if I'd be able to anymore. It's been years since I sat on a horse, so I'd probably just be absolutely yeah. useless now. But yeah, oh, that was yeah. probably all I did. I'd say that was my my thing, mm. and then uh, and then ventured into the weights. Then back in, I think it was like 2010, I started training. Yeah. Um, and was there anything that like there. You, was there anything that like got you into it, or did you just be like, oh, I might go and train some weights, or so. I kept. I lived in Italy for six years, and okay. it it all sort of started as I was coming home from there. So I came home from there, started getting into the gym, and I sort of did my gym instructor qualification and all, all that. Um, and for me, it was more. I was very, very unhappy with how I looked. Um, yeah. And when I lived in Italy as well, I was with this boy pretty much the entire time I was out there. And towards the end of our relationship, I just got completely sort of battered emotionally. Um, and, and almost a little bit physically towards the end as well, hence why I left. But mm. um, I'd say I felt very uncomfortable. I didn't really like anything about myself, didn't like how I looked. And I think that was kind of my driving force to get me into the gym and start training a little bit. Yeah. Um, I was more of a cardio bunny. 
to begin with. And then I started training with one of the guys in the gym where I was working and he got me into the weights. And as soon as you see that first bicep flex when you're brushing your hair. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at me. Yeah. Exactly. More. I yeah. need more. <laughs> and then that was it. <laughs> so, um, so I think, yeah, for, for me, it was more about trying to build confidence to begin with and, and sort of just be happy with body image, which <laughs> I've chosen the wrong sport because I've never had yep. it. Yeah, you, you chose <laughs> a broken a sport. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different type of sort of strive for perfection I yeah. don't know about you guys but it's like it's not so much on oh do I fit into this size six it's please I don't want my doubts to fit into this size sport <laughs> yeah <laughs> I know oh my god so yes I didn't fit into a medium today brilliant do you want size <laughs> yeah, so I've no, got that no. point where like in off season, I just wear Dan stuff because it's like easier. And now I'm just like, I, this is actually a dress now. This t shirt, I can't, I can't, I can't sense. Well, I could chuck a belt around it and wear it like a dress. Yeah, yeah it's all the fashion now, and it's all the rage doing that. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh, uh, be like, oh no, this doesn't fit. Yes. <laughs> I know. Oh no, I just ripped another pair of jeans getting in the car. Oh shit. <laughs> Jeans? I, I can't remember the last time I wore jeans. <laughs> oh dear, it's crazy. Yeah, it? well, since that, I I, I got to be honest. I got one cheap pair which are full of holes, <laughs> which I'm wearing today actually. <laughs> and uh, and my best pair of jeans I put on in off season, and as, as I got in the car, ripped right at the back. And I've never bought nice. another pair of jeans since because they just don't fit. <laughs> so, I find oh, screw it. Even if you do find jeans that fit. As soon as you sit down and your knees are at 90 degrees, <laughs> I get this throbbing in my ankles where basically the fabric is cutting off the blood supply of my venous return from my feet and everything falling <laughs> in my legs. It's just not comfortable. Yeah, no, completely agree. <laughs> oh, Jog, like... the, joggers and baggy t-shirts, isn't it? That's, what, that's the life. Yeah. That's yeah. the life. Yeah. That's it. Although it's getting warm enough for shorts now, which is refreshing. Although yes. it seems I've stretched all of mine in off-season. <laughs> it's just like which is like one leg is basically just a dress <laughs> yeah yeah oh dear oh gee whiz so, so when uh, oh, sorry go ahead bro oh, no, say, okay. um, so when you're not training in the gym what what's your what do you do for work wise what's your occupation so i am a recently appointed specialist cardiac physiologist for the nhs i feel um, sorry for you fellow thanks. nhs <laughs> Oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love here, so, like, yeah. yeah, fellow NHS work. <laughs> Pray for us. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's always fun working for the NHS when you're on prep, I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I've been in the department for like seven years. I was working in Cardiff first, did my degree alongside that. I came in at entry level, did my degree whilst working full time. Fully qualified, um, did my first junior year with them and then switched health boards. And the beginning of this year, I got um, awards, well, got uh, interviewed and got uh, appointed for my specialist role. So, congratulations. So, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy it. Yeah, I love it. I do love it. I love my job. I find it fascinating. Mm. Um, it's a little bit easier now. So, back last year when I was prepping for the British, um, I had an awful lot of on call to cover and things and it was just it was just so stressful it was ridiculous is that with your on call is that and social hours as well yeah 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 that's always that's... fun when you you wake up thinking oh, I've got to last until I don't know about your shifts but for me for example a night shift I'd wake up at 11 and I have to wait until I have to make that food last from 11 a.m. on, say, Monday yeah. until I wake up again at 1 p.m. on Tuesday. So if you think like. Yeah, it's That's a long old time. It's horrendous. It's yeah. horrendous. And it's nothing. You know, when you get that call at like three in the morning and you just you're like, fuck, I'm starving now. And all yeah, you want to do once you've done a good few hours and then, you know, you still got work and stuff to do because we if we got called we'd still have to go into work and then you take back however many hours from 12 o'clock onwards between 12 and 6 that you were called you take those back and then you get an early finish um 
you know, and you get to lunchtime, you just be flagging. You think, I've still got to go and train. I've still got cardio to go and do. Mm. I've got like three mouthfuls of food left. You know, yeah. you're there sort of eyeing up the dust bunnies on the floor. Thinking, yeah. how, much, how much nutrition can I get out of licking this floor tile? You know, yeah. anything fucking yeah. day, like, yeah, it's grim. You know, and obviously medically, you know, you are dealing when you, but I, I don't know about, um, about you guys, but like for my job, we are dealing with like cardiac arrests and things and you know people coming in having heart attacks so it can be really 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 quite intense you know two yeah. weeks out from the british you know i was doing cpr on people trying to mm-hmm. find the energy to keep somebody alive when i can barely keep myself standing up you know you just think three Jesus, days out from, this one's smash. three days out from turning pro i'm on my knees doing cpr oh, Jesus. In, the, uh, in, the, in like the middle of a car park thinking and that was with an hour left of my shift and oh still, my god luckily we didn't convey to ed we we were the second vehicle so we went back to station but it was still by the time we left scene it was finish time 45 yeah. minutes back to station and then i had an hour's drive i was meant to go and train i didn't that day because by the time i got home it was like nine o'clock and i had to be back up at yeah four four a.m four thirty for cardio the next day it was... oh mind you god. probably burnt hundreds if not thousands of calories doing cpr I don't know how yeah. effective it was, if I'm honest. <laughs> it would probably be the, like the weight of a feather, just. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't think I my survival rate was very good that final week. Sorry, Amy? No. I said I don't think my survival rate was very high that week at all. No. It was, uh, yeah, it's, it's grim. It's grim. You, and then you've got, you got the mental side of it then, haven't you? You know, because yeah. the message is and you just think, oh, oh, like, I know I was beating myself up thinking, did I do enough? Could I have done more? And it's like, oh, you, it's just it's horrible it's not what you yeah. want especially three days out jesus yeah did you find um, that do you find that maybe having like a job like you both had or have do you think doing something like that so close to show did affect your final look yeah 100 percent. if you look at my british look last year worst look i've had and you could see the stress all over my body yeah all oh, over my body it was just don't get me right i'm still happy with you know i I still place well but it was if you looked at all of my looks from the year that when it was the most stressful prep I had I was absolutely drained the entire time it was poor Rob bless him he was he was trying his hardest but my head yeah. was just not with it and I was beating myself up thinking I looked like shit I was so tired just everything all in one and I was one big giant stress ball so I'd say that it was a hands down the worst look that I've had for the last couple of years you know and it's the one that we were like sh- I know this year I was like shit I need to I need to rectify that yeah. you know um and so I, I changed changed jobs and whilst the job is still stressed it's a much calmer environment so I'm actually finding it a, a bit easier now to handle yeah. the two of them together you know but I switched in 2020 <laughs> after turning pro from being out on the ambulances to working in the control room yeah for multiple of reasons but I was fed up of getting off late the the hour drive either side of a 12-hour shift was just killing me and having that less physical output during the the shift because I'm yeah. literally sat at desk, being able to eat, drink, pee when I want. Yeah, when you're on prep, like getting stuck with an hour and a half blue light drive, you can't just pull over for a wee because you're already not going to make the target anyway. Mm-hmm. No, it's um, that's just it's even so like you just said something as simple as just being able to pee. You know, like. I'm in the middle of a case in the lab if we haven't got cover I'm sat there my bladder's bursting you know I'm just I just want to cry you know and that's stressful yeah, <laughs> you <beat> yourself. yeah. <laughs> so this new job Amy, are you are you on call or are you kind of just in 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 a lab or whatever in a, with consistent times that you go and leave and whatever <laughs> Can I do with this camera? <laughs> I have to, do, do not stress do not stress I'm gonna need to go and pee in a sec anyway <laughs> trying to get my my battery just sounds like it's going to go um so so at the minute we're not on call um it's a service that we are hoping to bring in it is there's plans for it to come up to our hospital now uh, at the minute the main on-call center is in cardiff mm. but we are we are in the process of hopefully bringing it in but i don't think whilst the cases coming in can sometimes be stressful the the team themselves like the consultants and things, it's just it's a, a nicer, calmer environment. It's not oh, a tertiary centre like the other one. Yeah. So I I don't think it would be quite as stressful as what I was dealing with. 
yeah. whilst I was down there. You know, I'm hoping anyway. But yeah. I'm sure, like, I'm very, I'm very lucky that the people I work with are actually very, very supportive. And I think yeah. if I was struggling and I asked them to maybe people to swap out on calls me for the weeks leading into my show, I, I think they probably would just so that yeah. I could rest and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah, they they, yeah. they are a great lesson. You know, I, I'm very lucky with even the team I worked with in Cardiff. The team themselves, the physiologists, were all very great. It was yeah. just, just how it was above, isn't it, that were the problem. So that's the thing, and it's so important. Like we talk about environment loads, don't we? Very where it's like you know you just need to try and make the environment that you're in as good as possible for you to progress forward like you know yeah. even though you're in a very what can be very stressful environment the people around you trying to alleviate some of the stress is a massive indicator of how you're going to look on stage so yeah it's good that you have those people around you that can you know make some changes for you if necessary and if needed yeah oh it's, they are they're good as gold you know and and i think especially if i like going into bigger shows you know, if I was to just say, listen, you know, I'm feeling quite drained. Because it also, it bothers me that I, I've got this constant in the back of my head that my mental capacity is, is quite diminished as well. Yeah. Because of obviously when it's depleting everything. And you've got to focus so much on the job that I don't want to be not quick enough in reacting if, if shit's about to hit the fan. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think if I had concerns, I'm, I'm an asked to maybe be rotated into the less intense areas for the last week or two. I always take the week off before my show anyway. Just yeah. so I can rest and sleep and yeah. catch up. Um, I learned that it, after 2020. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think if I were to ask, I'm sure they'd be quite accommodating for me, you know, just to help relieve some of that stress for me. So I'm very grateful for that, to be honest, because not everyone's that lucky, are they? You know? No. Like my, my role, yeah, I've moved into the control room, but I would still be expected to do, I can have a occupational health assessment and potentially come off night shifts that way but okay still, but you have to have a genuine medical kind of reason more than I just don't want to work nights yeah um, and then the actual role itself they're all very mentally demanding so there isn't really that avenue you've still got to be like on it yeah so I just have to try and I'm pretty good up until 10 11 o'clock in the morning fasting okay and just try and condense all my meals and then fall over at the end of the shift <laughs> there's no other way around it and this, with nights I find genuinely after or generally after 1am I don't need as much food so I'll just save one one meal for that kind of the doldrums that is 4am yeah <laughs> and I can ride the rest of the shift through but it does take some like thinking and trying things out as to how I can actually do this shift or do my shifts around prepping yeah you know, it's all possible you've just got to be you've got to plan it haven't you and think yeah. about it you know because like what type of shifts do you do then do you do like three short days four like what's the sort of layout my rate is four on four off two day okay. shifts two night shifts four off so I'm always finishing my runner shift off the back of a night shift which is right. fun yeah because then you, you lose a day off effectively i was gonna say yeah because you spend that day trying to catch up your sleep then don't you you're either you're either trying to push through on like four hours sleep and just a zombie or if you sleep longer yeah you might be refreshed for the afternoon but then you can't get to sleep at night because you're now in yeah night shift mode. yeah that's that's rough that's rough. Yeah. I do find that that affects, like, with your sleep pattern and things. Do you find it's completely? My sleep is a bit foobarred from 20 years of shift work anyway. So, oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I take forever to get to sleep. Yeah. I wake up a lot. Um, the only saving grace at the moment is some melatonin and 5-HTP. H- which yeah. seems, uh, And some other bits that Dan's managed to Google apogee and something else and I actually find now that I'm sleeping all the way through until sort of half four. Oh, okay uh, and then I'll I'll doze from half four till I kind of get up at six yeah um, but that's more of a, a prep side effect than a shift work side effect um yeah but yeah it's just trying to catch up on the sleep where I can um like before 
Dan and I got together, I'd be in bed by half past eight. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> like my dream life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The joy of dating. Sorry? So that'll be me tonight. Yeah, yeah. Half, half eight, I, pushed him in bed. <laughs> yeah, normally I'd get into bed at about eight, at 8.30. Yeah. By the time Dan actually stops danning around. And he gets into bed. <laughs> But then that's I love how you put it danning around. Yeah, now. Well, it, it, no other way to describe it. He just dans about. Yeah, um, he does. He's just a like, being. I mean, he's just living. He's not even thinking anymore. <laughs> he's <just> existing. Yeah. <laughs> um, on his zero carb. But like Kelly would say, oh, you know, we'll just, just go to bed anyway. But my problem is if I fall asleep at half eight and he wakes me up at nine, my little fucked up brain is there going, right, where are we going? What have we got to do? Right, come on. Oh, let's yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> be awake for hours then after that yeah and it would be like yeah. on midnight before i get back to sleep because of that it's like this ingrained high alert to to be ready to to do whatever that you need to do yeah so i don't know if you get that off the back of your own calls that kind of like, yeah you say, like yeah any any noise and it's like little little panic attack and you know start, start getting dressed just to go to the toilet yeah. <laughs> 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 What's going on? Oh wait, it's just need a piss. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. We're just uh. fine, we're fine. We're fine. Come down. <laughs> Blood pressure's through the roof, like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mate. I did like during. I think it was January when work had been particularly stressful over Christmas. I I was doing my BP once a week, and it was constantly like one sixty four over ninety six. Oh, That's not shit. <laughs> yeah, it's like it wonder if felt like shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh bless dear. you! Don't yeah. work in healthcare, kids. Yeah. I know. It's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> he's really well as well. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you like like you know struggling with the cost of living, if you find that a challenge, <laughs> join the NHS. Oh mate, I'm <laughs> NHS the next dad. It'd be a good job. Kelly's not here as well. There'd be three of us just like. <laughs> oh god, yeah. I'll be surrounded by NHS workers. <laughs> Like I should start clapping or something. Yeah, you should get a pan though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was something like mid lockdown. We've we've headed to a job out in the middle of nowhere, and it was about three minutes past eight. We drove through this little village, and um, the department I was working for at the time, we travelled around in convoy with the hazardous area response team. So we had like just vehicles full of equipment. We didn't convey patients. We've rocked through this village three like marked up vehicles all with Battenberg down the side blue lights going and everyone just stood there and like watched us go by there was no clapping at all it's like <laughs> damn it <laughs> driving past you what you should have just been like fuckers yeah have a nice chat <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. God. Oh, oh, it's Hello. crazy it's mad isn't it you guys yeah are NHS and you like honestly hats off you both I couldn't do it I couldn't do it. I mean, one of my clients, she's um, she works in the A&E in Southmead. And obviously that's like, I think it's like the biggest A&E in the Southwest, isn't it? Or something like that. And some of the stories she's told me, just I'm just like, oh, how can you? I don't know how she does it, to be honest. I really don't. I couldn't work in A&E. My goodness. It's a whole new you level. You don't have any windows for a start. <laughs> yeah. Any A&E department you go into in the country, money on, once you actually get back to like minors or majors, no windows. Weird. Yeah, I can't work here because there's no windows. Yeah, there's no natural light. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's horrendous! Horrendous. That's why they're all so nuts down there. Yeah, I think so, probably. Yeah. probably. Yeah. <laughs> Locked in the Mind basement. Row, you had a window, and you're still mad. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, I do have a window in the control room. We have windows mainly oh. for the sun to beam in and just blind you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's true. Yeah. That you're not actually outside enjoying the weather. You know, it's it's yeah. lovely outside. Yeah, you're, you're, you're being there. <laughs> off on a tangent, sort of a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I do you. What are your sort of top tips for working a, a stressful, mentally taxing job whilst on prep? Do you have any anything that you you do to cut any hacks that you have? I wouldn't say I've got any hacks. I really fucked it up for the British. <laughs> 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 but, um, no, for me, I, I've got to be honest. I actually, I've done quite a bit of counselling and things, and I've worked with Kay McCready, um, like emotional well-being and stuff like that. 
as well just to get like a little toolbox for me to cope when things start to get a bit overwhelming yeah. um, little little things for me to do to kind of snap myself out of it or get myself through it and kind of harness what I'm feeling rather than letting it take over you know yeah it's be very good isn't she yeah, like, yeah. I, 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 I had a great a great little um stim yeah. with her to be honest I found it very useful um, I'd already done quite a bit of normal counselling up until that point in any case, just to deal with things I knew I had to deal with. Yeah. Um, but I did, we worked together the tail end of last year after the British, up until oh, the beginning okay. of this year. So it's, it's, it's recent. Um, yeah. That, and yeah, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> and I've got some, I said, some great, some great um, sort of tools that I can use now. Yeah. So yeah. when things do start to get a bit nuts, I've got these things that I can turn to to help myself get through it, you know, because yeah, yeah. you do need them. Like prep's stressful anyway, isn't it? You know, oh, without sure, adding in, yeah. you know, and especially I think as females, I think we're all a little bit nuts with our hormones. <laughs> you can say that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I saw Kay do a seminar last year or something like that, and I missed it because I was just, it was like post prep for me and I, I was all over the place. But I, yeah, yes. I've heard very good things about okay I didn't realize she was so specified in like mental health work. I didn't really, I, I thought yeah. she. Uh, coach. Yeah, because it's like it's, it's emotional well, health and well being. Um, okay. And it's, um, I said, it's, I think I said, as females in particular, we can, because of the hormones and things like that, I think, like, I don't know for myself in particular, my emotions can control me completely. Oh, for sure. Um, and I think, I think that we, we can all learn the tools and sort of ways for us to, instead of letting those emotions take over and kind of sabotage us which is what I kept doing yeah. now I I flip what those emotions that I'm feeling what they mean and I can sort of flip it around so I can actually use them in a more positive way rather than yeah for sure. letting them just be negative yeah, like, you know I'm a massive massive believer of you know as, as cliche as whatever as sad as it sounds like whatever you can kit like deal with mentally and flip it into a positive light like you know you can achieve pretty much anything if you can control your mind agree. And like yeah. when I was younger, like I suffered with quite bad depression and stuff like that. And like, you know, <clears throat> obviously through like self-harm and stuff, flipping. Yeah. I was saying this to someone else the other day, actually, like you are, you know, self-harm is obviously something where you, you, you know, you, you kind of equate pain to feeling something. Right. And then I get that now from training. So to flip something that was so negative and mm-hmm. so dangerous to actually utilizing it to, to to feed my dream is is something that is mentally massively more positive than what I used to to be doing you know yeah, and it, it's so important to not only develop physically but also to develop mentally because the more you develop your mental side of things the further you can take yourself it, it's it, the, the mind is an amazing place it really is it really is and, so, and, it, and it can make or break you you know mm-hmm. and for years and years it broke me not just from you know not not just from a bodybuilding point of view but just from life in general you know when and, and when the depression took me back in so like 2016 to 2017, which was 2017 when I first started counselling. Yeah. Because the depression got, got so bad that, you know, I honestly was at a point where I wanted to, to just end everything, you know. Yeah. And it, it was, yeah. Choosing to live was the hardest thing I ever did. And nothing after that point will ever be as difficult, in my opinion. Yeah. And I've learned, I said, these ways now where I will never allow myself to get to that point again yeah it's given so much I think like probably the same for you with with you know with your depression it is it creates you into this it gives you this inner strength that I think you could just apply to absolutely everything oh uh, I 100% you know agree. Like, nothing like yeah. no prep nothing you go through in prep nothing you go through in life will ever be as hard as what you came through when you came through that massively you know yeah. and it's what we're coming through talking about depression and counselling Oh, we really, yeah. We really flipped the switch in you. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, Sarah knows sentence. I've got a few bits to say on that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. Um, I'm currently awaiting an uh, assessment for what we think is potentially PTSD. Really? Um, I've been off work a couple of months now. Um, the anxiety, it got so bad. I've never had anxiety that's been quite so all-consuming um I'm a bit mentally I've got a bit more space but the thing that I put up on my story today um the physical symptoms it's of that that stress coming out that anxiety coming out 
like I've done saying Sarah before we started recording and before you joined us managed to do my back this week I've got so much tension it's like under in here from yeah. where I think my respiratory rate was was up a few months oh ago oh my god yeah yeah like do, we started think, the prep in do you think that January. stemmed do you sorry Rose, do you think that stemmed from your years in the NHS as an ambulance worker like do you think that's where it's come yeah. from Oh yeah, the, okay. the PTSD definitely. There's nothing. There's it's all work related, and um, yeah. something that is becoming more apparent is what I thought were just memories are actually flashbacks because oh of how God. how in the moment, like I literally I zone out. Yeah, um, yeah. and I'm like seeing things. I had um I had one a few weeks ago. Uh, just as I was dropping off, I had this this image, and it was like. <gasps> Just, but like literally hearts like pounding. Um, my partner's mum started, she works as a, um, she works for a charity for dementia. And she was telling us a story and I suddenly, my heart started doing this and I started getting really, really hot and yeah. sweating. Never had anything like that before. And literally I was stood with some patio doors behind me. I could have turned on my heel and bolted. And oh what she was God. saying wasn't anything particularly horrific. It was just the story about this old man. But it was so similar to the patients I've been to in work. I was literally just like, gosh, yeah. man. It's mad, isn't it? Constantly clenching my teeth, mm. and gritting my jaw. And, oh, it's, yeah. It's not a fun, fun place to be. But it is, it never ceases to amaze me how much of a link between psychologicalness and <laughs> physiological symptoms like yeah. what's going on up here and how it sits and and ref, like, reflects in the body yeah it's, it's yeah. crazy yeah. isn't it? Mm. it it really is you yeah. know, the physical symptoms you get from the mental issues that you that you have yeah. and it's just like i had my ex used to have um quite bad anxiety and his would always kind of trigger as like chest pains you think he was having a heart attack or something you know, yeah. and, and like physically, it, it would just be a physical thing, but it was actually coming, yeah, coming from the the, the mind. It was meant, it, it, it actually mental. It's crazy. The, yeah. the thing I've been having more frequently, I remember having it when I was still at work in December and January, but as I've got more mental. Oh, school, Amy's disappeared. Her phone's definitely died. Oh no! <laughs> I'm guessing it's she'll. Okay. She'll come back. Shall I carry on? Yeah. Huh? Shall I carry on my little story? Yeah, carry, carry on with your story. Um, yeah, it started back in January and December, but as the being shut in my head yeah. has eased slightly, I'm noticing it's more present. It's like this pressure on my throat. It's almost like someone's got their hand here. Yeah. Like all yeah. the time. And um, to start off with, it would be intermittent. Now it will come like for a few hours. But something I noticed was I was in Pure Gym doing steps and stretching a few, like, the other week. Yeah. And um, a call taker from work came in. I think you told me about this. Yeah. Way. Yeah. And it, it got worse and worse and worse. And it gets to the point where I can't, I feel like I can't breathe. I don't know I am breathing. Yeah. And I'm not breathless, but it's so tight around my neck that it interferes with, let's let her back in. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, interferes with everything. Interferes with my breathing. And it's it's then happened. I've seen another person that I work with um, who I'd done a few jobs with out on the road. Yeah. Again, in the mornings. And then the problem I'm having is that will then be there all day. And I'll, it sounds stupid, but I'll hear sirens and I'm like, or I'll see an ambulance. Like the other day I had to drive past an ambulance to get to my house. And it, yeah. yeah. Can't Crazy, walk. isn't it? Like little watch, triggers uh, and stuff what was it we were watching dan put something on and i was like I, I just can't i can't watch this it was something with a bit of violence and normally i'm like utterly desensitized to blood gore guts violence yeah. but yeah mm. yeah you're back in what happened you're back oh no your microphone's <laughs> not working oh fuck. there we go oh, wait, <laughs> that was working is it working <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was just it just needed a good I was gonna say it needed a good I can't get my words out. I was gonna say it just needed a good fuck, but that sounds really bad. <laughs> <Don't worry>. Nice. <laughs> it's, a good, uh, 
Right, oh, I'm yeah, back. Yeah. Sorry, my phone died, so I've had to come back on the computer and try and get that to work. So I, it's worked. Hopefully it is. It's working now. Oh yes. There was a little box when I was trying to log in earlier that was asking for permission to use my camera, and I just kept ignoring it. That's why it wouldn't work. Ah, there we but, go. So. If you, obviously you learned that, you know, the British was, you had a really stressful kind of prep for the British, regardless of how, how that went, how, if you, if someone said to you, right, Amy, I, I want to compete, but what do I need to be aware of? What would you tell that person? Oh no, her microphone's gone again. Your microphone's gone again. <laughs> I can say what I tell people. Just to fill the silence. Yeah. Bodybuilding's fucking expensive. Nobody <laughs> told me that. <laughs> it is expensive. Yes, that is. Uh... Yeah, if anyone says it's cheap, then it's not. <laughs> They're lying. Yeah. They are lying. <laughs> oh, dear. Have you sorted your bikini? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Actually, Amy inspired my bikini a little bit. <gasps> is that yours? Yes. Oh, we can hear her now. Oh, no, you've gone again. <laughs> <laughs> Try talking a minute. Right, can you hear me? Yes, there's a hello? bit of a lag, so we'll just have to be mindful. <laughs> hello. hello. I'm back on and then I'll join. There we go. No, <laughs> no, 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 you're good. You're good. You're good. Is that okay? Right, yeah. I'm just going to have to get really close. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sorry. Right. It's like the forehead episode again. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> You just, I've just had my Botox, it hasn't kicked in yet. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get on that. Don't judge my wrinkles, guys. Um, no. Yeah, so that's yours, is it? Yeah. yeah. It is so beautiful. I, I'm so friggin' oh, jealous. A well, it was, it was of kind of inspired by yours, because I was toying between purple and blue as choices. Yeah. And then I was like, what about purple? And blue. And blue. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's stunning. It's yeah. so stunning. Can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. She um she actually said, because I've got another one as well. She said she was gonna release that today, so I'm waiting with bated breath. Oh, oh wait, that's then... amazing. On the page, is it? Huh? Is it on the page, is it? Yes. Do you want me to get it up? Because I screenshot it obviously. Uh, wait, what's her name? Miss Bikini Fitness, shameless plug. She is an she awesome, is awesome lady. She is the best in the biz. Come up with some awesome creations. I tell you, oh, she's ha- she's one. knocked them out of the fucking park this year. Some of the oh, stuff yeah. she's had, incredible. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm amazing. looking forward to seeing my um my second suit. Do you know? Have you picked your colours for the second one then? Yeah. Or is it she's gonna go away into a thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be um more of the like flower petal type style. Um, oh, I know. Yeah. And in gold. So I'm excited for that. Pretty. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to. She hasn't released it yet, though, has she? I'm going to be keeping my eyes peeled for that now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she told me that she was going to release it, to, or she was going to do it today. So right. uh, put it up today. So. Yeah. Nice. Because when's your first show then? What's the first one that you're doing? I'm doing Toronto Pro on the 4th of June. Um, right. I'd like to do Portugal, but being as I'm off work now and no longer get my 25% unsociable, I don't know if that's going to be affordable because we also want to do Chicago um, uh, on the 23rd, okay. of June, uh, 23rd of July. And um, that's also Dan's birthday weekend. And it would kind of be because I'm going to do the, the True Athlete figure show. Amazing. Just for, just for shits and giggles. Um, so the idea being we'll be in Chicago, I won't be on prep prep, I'll be able, it'll be on the reverse, so I can enjoy the few days that we're in Chicago, and still yeah. have two weeks before the True Athlete show, for mm. any water from eating deep That's dish pizza and fair. cheesecake. Nice. <laughs> I'll go to Chicago and not have a Chicago town deep dish pizza, and a Chicago oh my God, no. cheesecake. It's yeah, true. Completely it's true. true. Yeah. That should be good though, Ray. I'm really excited to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Really excited. We've booked our flights. I just need to actually buy my pro card. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. out of curiosity then, how much does that actually cost? Like the pro I, the pro card? I think when you convert it, I think it's something like around two hundred to two hundred and seventy quid. 
Like 250 oh. to 270 quid, yeah. But then, if you've got the money to do multiple shows and travel, yeah. then actually, if you think that's only two two bro shows. Yeah, it's true. That's true. Mm, yeah. Because you have to, like, with regards to, like, registration and things, then, for your pro shows, yeah. do you have to pay registrations and everything as well, then? No. So you, so you just pay for the card and that's yep. it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, you sign, that's actually you sign contracts for shows, so you're, like, you're okay. asked, say you're doing, like, Vancouver and Texas and Toronto, whatever, you ask for those contracts and you basically, you're, you're like, you're bound to that show via a contract. Oh, okay. But it's if, you have, if you say you're doing it, you're doing it. Yeah, you, exactly. You can get a medical exemption. Like, for example, if you if you ruptured your Achilles a week out, yeah, and you've you've got a medical certificate, then that's fine. But otherwise, they fine you. And I think yeah. that's oh, gone up to a thousand pounds now. If you say you're going to do a show and you don't do it, like, yeah. jeez, I was I'll be lying in bed. <laughs> I was lying in bed the night before I flew to Budapest and it was like questioning my life choices. And I was like, I could just, <laughs> and then I was like, fuck, no, I can't afford to not go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh Mad. God. I was Mad. not in a good headspace for that show. Nah, no, but yeah. So what's the plan going forward then, Aim? Like yeah. what are you doing for the rest of the year? So I haven't got any solid plans just yet. So I've got a couple of photo shoots coming up. So I'm going to go to Ireland next week to do a shoot with Stephen Black. And um, I've got another one booked with a guy called Ash um, Osman. Um, after that, at the minute, I'm just kind of resting. So we're just letting the body a bit of food, a bit of chill time. Um, and I will do something later in the year. Um, mm. It's going to be NPC. I'm sticking with NPC now. I, I, mean, I think that's where I fit better. Yeah. yeah based off what we were saying earlier with the categories and things. Um, so me and Rob will have a little chat. We're still sort of weighing up what we think is going to be the best route and the best shows and things to do. But I've got a few in, in mind, um, but I'll do something a bit later in the year, but I just haven't finalised anything just yet. So yeah, there will be a comeback. There will be a comeback. Do the, um, do the race trick rumble, Aim. You're almost guaranteed yeah. like to have a lot of girls there that you know, the potential to get your pro card is going to be there. Is that a pro qualifier? It. I, just before the British. Oh, yeah, it's regional. Sorry, I had a brain fart. Yeah. Um, yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I can't be giving up money for any more of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So is, is the British uh, a possibility? It is. It is definitely a possibility. The only problem I've got is that I will be, I'm heading to America to see family for a week, the end of September. And I'll come back and I'll be about, I'd be about two weeks out. So it's doable because I'm not going like I'm where they live now is up in kind of they just bought a house up in the hills and the woods and it's it's going to be lots of walking and they eat really well so I'm not going to be going out there having like the proper American dream and IHOP and stuff, <laughs> um, but it's it's whether I don't know how my body would react like I've never flown being lean, so yeah. I don't know you know would I, did you... I I suppose two weeks would be enough to to rebound back though wouldn't it I think so how yeah. did you did you get much water when you flew to Legion, Sarah? Um, funnily enough, no. Like, I I dropped some fucking ridiculous amount on the way over. To be fair, like, I I can't even remember what weight it was, but I I pretty sure I dropped at least two two and a half kilos just Jeez. from the flight. Yeah, so I was maybe like some reg residue that went after a good night's sleep or whatever, or. But it wasn't anything that would cost me a placing, in my opinion. No. I think, I think if you're flying long, they're far more set up for moving around. And obviously with movement, you're, you're helping move that water. Because <clears throat> so yeah. I, I mean, I didn't get much when I, fl I mean, I only went to Poland and then Budapest, um, but I left it quite late. Like I arrived on the Friday in Budapest and competed on the Sunday. Oh, um, nice. Poland I had a few more days but I don't remember from my check-ins thinking oh god this is horrific but then it's only a few right. hours yeah yeah how long's Wait, Canada eight I think oh that's not bad at all no like how many days down. before the show do you guys recommend like if you were going to do a show abroad like what would you say would be sort of 
how long would you say to give yourself in between when you land you know, was, to when you compete in? When I go to Canada, we land on the Wednesday and compete on the Sunday. Okay. I would have yeah. I would have preferred to have flown out a little bit earlier, but Dan's got the universe on the Sunday before. So right. I yeah. would have ideally probably liked to have flown out either that Sunday or the Monday. Yeah. But logistically that's just not possible. Yeah, because um, we're doing that's what I'm doing for the Texas is flying out on the Wednesday and I'm actually competing on the Saturday, I believe. Yeah. And okay. I think that's that's about right in terms of like time length, like as much as long as it was as much as it was nice to have like a week before when I went to Reno, it's money. I can't yeah. afford to be yeah. out there in Texas for much longer than I am. Like I'm literally out Ooh. there for five days and then I'm home again because yeah. I just don't have the money to do it anymore. And obviously like categories we're not winning 30 grand are we we're literally winning or making even or losing on competing not that we do it for money but it's like we're not earning enough to be able to stay out in these places for a long time are we so it's no. like being realistic with what you can you can have but i would say at least like if you're doing i would say yeah wednesday saturday wednesday sundays is more than enough time to make the changes that you need to make yeah. to bring a, pa a package that isn't like watered down on the weekend yeah. Yeah, just because because I am like abroad is in in my options for later this year. You yeah, know? European, so, no, I've, I've never done it, so it's yeah. Apparently, the European shows, obviously, where you've done one, but yeah. they're they're brilliant. Apparently, I yeah. strongly recommend Poland. Um, yeah, they put on a wicked show, even for the amateurs as well. It's it. I mean, the venue looked the same last year as it was in twenty twenty one. Um, and it's this leisure centre, but it's got a proper theatre and a proper stage with proper shelf seating. And um, the way they introduced the pros was we, we all went on stage behind the curtain, lights were down. It was this like purple hue. And then the curtain went up and it was just our silhouettes. And then oh, the lights came up. And it I was gave just... me goosebumps then. <laughs> Sorry, uh, oh, I, I've got them. I've got them thinking about it now because it was Literally yeah. Whereas though. Budapest was a lot more. Budapest was very, yeah, just a bit meh. It was kind of similar, apart from the fact it wasn't outside to the two bros show in the field, <laughs> it, with these horrendous <laughs> green lights behind you which I don't understand why you put green lights behind people that you've just spray painted orange. Is it... <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. Fucking hell. What a time to be alive, eh? Yeah. And there was like a bodybuilding stage and then a little pathway. And then there was like competitive pole dancing, which was interesting. Oh. Ah! I mean, they were they were fucking epic. They had like three poles. I lost myself for about forty minutes just watching these kids like <laughs> up these poles, and they're like going from one pole to the next. I'm like, I can barely Jeez. put my shoes on at the moment, let alone <laughs> throw myself on the pole, pole. Mad, 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 mad. Um, so I, we did get a question. I kind of we I kind of answered the Masters Olympia anyway um, with the lineup and stuff. What was the other question I got? Let me just find it. It was suggestions on effective movements for slimmer waists. Yeah. Just core control. It's your vacuums, isn't it? You know. Yeah, like I I've I never used to train abs um because I I I always did really like loads of compound movements for powerlifting and I I honestly feel that a lot of my core development came from those compound lifts just yeah. through bracing and, and core stability. I only started training abs last year in prep and I do think that made a massive difference to my core control and just midsection control on stage and obviously like I had one of the smallest waists on stage so it was kind of like I think it made a massive difference. So I think if you're looking to effectively effectively train your waist or bring in eights or give the illusion that it is slimmer it is just predominantly through core control midsection control like you said aim vacuums um, yeah. and also knowing how to contract your abs as well like you see loads of people doing these leg lifts when it's 90 percent hip flexor yeah. so it's all about you know knowing how to activate your abs in an efficient way which will bring you a slimmer more controlled midsection the yeah. thing i'd say about um training abs is 
it's going to be from CrossFit again. Um, part of my problem is I, I didn't train abs until probably March. Yeah. Um, because yeah. I've actually spent my competitive time trying to reduce my waist size because from CrossFit, it's all butterfly sit-ups and kipping. Yeah. So it's, you, you get these really thick obliques, which yeah. will then make your waist look blocky. And until you actually get, you know, it may be to maintain that smaller waist, you have to actually work on your lats and you have to work on your quads and you have to work on your glutes to kind of give that illusion that your waist is smaller. And yeah. um, for me, predominantly my abs working was wearing a waist trainer, which I know there is a lot of controversy about, but ultimately my logical brain is going, well, I'm putting, I'm applying resistance to my abs. It's not going to make my waist smaller, but it will tone my abs without actually increasing the size of my obliques. Because you have that constant, you're breathing against that resistance all the time. And you're yeah. working those ab muscles. So I, I appreciate that, you know, the, the research and the literature says that they are about as useful as a chocolate teapot. But personally, I've had, ex and even Dan will testify, when I take off my waist trainer, my abs are more defined because they've just been working harder. Yeah. yeah. But if I would be very, very cautious about the choices of abs workouts that you use, like you said, Sarah, leg raises are predominantly head hip flexors but they can also yeah. increase your obliques which you don't want yeah. as a builder i but think sit ups no go do not do not do them if you want to be a bodybuilder <laughs> i think <laughs> a lot of people use weight when they don't actually have the connection to their midsection like I, I don't train with my abs with any weight i literally just utilize a good rep range good control slow them right down good form and then you should be hitting them to a point where you're like fuck me like this is tough like earning yeah yeah exactly and i think people obviously just <laughs> use horrendous. yeah and then they just use weight and they just fucking hit every other part of their body that isn't the abs you know and then so, concentrating on contracting those sort of top section of abs so that you yeah. don't increase that waist thickness lower down like yeah. literally my range of motion of my abs is is a crunch i use one of those yeah. crunchy machines yeah 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 horrific mad, mad <laughs> as well. and i think as well like not only obviously the abdominal wall is like made up of two sections so you've got like obviously a transverse and then your rectus and i think it's very important to hit both of them because obviously transverse is majority cause stability because obviously origin insertion all that stuff and then obviously rectus is the one that you see and i think a lot of people only aim for rectus where there's a percentage of stability that you still get but the majority of it comes from transverse so say for example like with my clients i'll always do a transverse abdominus focus core workout with a rectus abdominus later down the week so like one week one part of the session would be like planks and dead bugs and then the other part will be crunches or something like like that like hit both <clears throat> both forms of abdominals and you should overall get just a better amount of core stability through those through the, through those different sessions and you and vacuums yeah. will work that that core stability as well oh yes yeah it's vacuums really solid. what's that aim is it this solid vacuum yeah you do the much core out of bed today. in the morning so lying there. I... <laughs> do you don't you in bed do you yeah yeah soon yeah. like when i when I first started doing them and I was learning to do them, it would literally be Brittany, my coach at the time was like 10 seconds on 10 seconds off. Mm -hmm. Just hit a few rounds of that before you get up in the morning and learning to do it without food in my stomach then meant I was, I'm able to do it when I do have food in my stomach, which again is then taxing it in a different way because you're trying to suck in, even though you've got a belly full of oats. Yeah, that's and that's rough. That is enough to make you want to spill. <laughs> yeah. I can't say I've ever done vacuums, to be fair. No? no I've, I've been trying to incorporate them, but I just can't. I, they're just fucking solid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I do find that my hip flexors are so tight that whenever I try and vacuum, it's like they're restricting me from moving, like, my core. Yeah. Oh, like. Yeah, I don't know whether it is hip flexors, whether I'm just, my obliques are just tight. Because I've had my abdominals released once and it was like hell on earth. So I don't know yeah. whether they're just naturally tight and I just need to have them really soft. So the osteopath got his thumb in my hip flexor earlier. That oh. was not fun. That makes me want to be sick as well. It's like instant kind of nausea in it when they get in yeah. that abdomen. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was after I he put his thumb in my glute and I nearly jumped off the table. 
<laughs> I had my um, serrated anterior done the other week as well. That's grim. Like all three yeah. inch muscles. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Somewhere, Do you have something I'm trying like to scrape in and stuff as well? What's that? Love scraping. Do you have the fascist scraping? Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 Have you ever tried self-releasing, like, under here? Yeah. (laughs) Because I'm getting so much tension from gritting my teeth all the time. And, yeah, people are going to say vaping's not helping, but that overall helps my stress levels at the moment. Uh, But, yeah, I've been getting my stomach in under that line, like your soft palate. Yeah. And that is, like, what? Feels really nice once you actually release it, though. Yeah, um, and like the freedom down the front of my neck is amazing, but the actual feeling of doing it, Dan was like, "Do you want me to do it for you?" It's, no, absolutely not, Dan. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> so, uh, it probably oh, break my yeah, larry. Yeah, try it out, mate. Don't know. Give it a Man. go. Yeah, it's really good for stress relieving, especially like around the back of your jaw. Okay, <laughs> remember that. Aim. <laughs> I'll do it wrong. I'll, you'll see me like in a week. I'll have a broken jaw or something. <laughs> I get now and then. I'm like, oh, oh, I better not stimulate my carotid too much and blow a clot or something <laughs> stupid. It's like, how ridiculous is that? I'm not going to get that from massaging my fucking sternal <laughs> cleaner oh, mastoid. Yeah. <laughs> you pull some interesting oh, faces when you do it. Sorry, it's like. <laughs> Fitting. <laughs> Amy, you're definitely an overthinker. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think that's part of the job description when you join the NHS. Are you an over? It is. It absolutely is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a prerequisite. <laughs> I've got some questions from Kelly. Oh, nice. Kelly Dog. He said, What's your favorite? These are quite good ones, actually. What's your favorite memory? <laughs> My favorite memory. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah <laughs> Kelly <laughs> oh, I don't even know <laughs> I can think of a memory um, no, like bodybuilding related or she just, anything she, she just said yeah what's your favourite memory so I'd say one of my it's a childhood one for me then, one of my favourite ones, and that would be back when I used to go with my granddad. I used to be li- like when I was a really little girl, and on a Sunday, my nan would be making like the roast dinner with all the vegetables from my granddad's allotment. And um, he used to take me and my cousin, we used to walk from our house down to the old Rafa Club because he gets RAF, and we used to play a game of pool, get a little glass of Coke, a little packet of crisps, game of pool, granddad. And then walk up the canal and used to teach us all about the plants and the different sort of animals and like there'd be you no know, stuff I didn't actually hear about, but it was nice to listen to him talk. <laughs> and, um, yeah, yeah. and then you're like, just Whoa. like, Can I have some more sweets? Yeah. Whereas exactly. now it's like Can oh, I have some more Christmas? I'm starving. Yeah, now I wish I'd listened a bit more. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we get back to the house, dinner would be ready, and then we'd have dinner. Eat if I if I talked whilst I was eating my dinner, he used to tell me to can you just eat that nicely, please? I said, like, well, I am eating it. <laughs> What's eating it nicely? But, um, yeah, so I get told off for talking at the dinner table. Um, but, yeah, it, that's probably one of my favourite memories, just because he was he was my my absolute favourite person in the whole world. So, yeah, yeah that's mine. Awesome. What about you guys? Winning my pro card. <laughs> yeah, I think that's got me out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, and when I almost won it, but there weren't enough people. <laughs> <laughs> I think... <laughs> Another one of my favourite memories was when I picked up my dog, like when oh. I first got her. Really? She in, yeah, she was in the footwell of my mini and I was totally unprepared because I had to go to Pets at Home on the way back to get her like a dog bed and stuff like that. I literally oh. thought, no, I was like, I'm going to go and get a dog. <laughs> so I did. And I was like, oh, I better get some her to sleep <laughs> and some bowls for her to... And like we were driving back. I lived in London at the time. We were driving back from Harlow where I got her down the A12 and I'm like talking to her in the footwell trying to decide her name and just saying the different choices that I had and when I said Ruby she was like like, oh Ruby it is then she like tilted her head yeah that's That's probably one of them and her offs to to an audience of nobody because it was locked down oh that is so god that I've never heard that story before bro 
Oh, my Ruby story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's really cute. That's cute. He normally features on the podcast in some capacity, but um, I, I've, I've seen, I've seen yeah, him. <laughs> I got kicked into the office today because um, I didn't think Dan wanted to spend two hours or however long we end up on here sat in the office not watching TV. <laughs> yeah, if you can't have carbs, let him out early at least. Yeah, it? exactly. <laughs> uh, also ask what your favourite smell is. My favourite smell. <laughs> Sorry, it's just like, um, what the fuck? I mean, I'm guessing not. Sure. <laughs> it's an absolutely easy one. Sainsbury's Bakery, early oh, seven o'clock in the morning. Bakery. When those, when those donuts, when those donuts are coming out. Oh, yes, <laughs> that's the one. I'd, I'd yes. wear that as a scent. Yes, <laughs> perfumed a bakery. <laughs> what about yours, Sarah? Have you got a favourite smell? Um. Hmm. I don't know actually you know it's probably like something like bacon or something like that <laughs> you know you oh, can't get it a smell of bacon cooking yeah that's a great smell. that is a great smell that smells like childhood holidays that does don't you mind yeah. yeah yeah i don't I've even really eat bacon obsession yeah. with um use on the ron's reeve gauche perfume my mum used to wear it as a kid and I find, like, when I smell it, I'm really smell orientated. So I find it really smooth, soothing. That and lavender. Ooh. I'm such an old lavender, baby. Yeah. Oh, do you like lavender? I'm not yeah. a lavender girl. <laughs> lavender what are and on a pillow spray. Damn <laughs> <laughs> it. I'm going to get the bakery smell on my pillow. That's going to be my pillow. <laughs> Just, Just take it the and rub it up against the donuts. <laughs> yeah. <Exactly. laughs> yeah. Give it a little <laughs> lick in the night, like. <laughs> when, I, when I worked in London, I used to cycle to work. It was about seven miles, and um, I'd be cycling in for a six o'clock start, and then I'd cycle past a biscuit factory. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I used to work this... next to Havis, and you. Oh get my god. Miles, yeah. I'd cycle into work, being all healthy, and then have two cans of fat coke and a massive fuck off bowl of crunchy nut cornflakes. <laughs> <laughs> like. Five past six in the morning. Love it. <laughs> yeah. And um, her last question is, what would be your last meal of choice? My last meal of choice? Well, there'd be donuts. I think we've established that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, my last meal of choice, it would either be um, an all, all the like, meat feast piece. Oh, meat feast pizza because I'm absolutely obsessed with pizzas um, so either one of those or if not just something like a roast in it like a Sunday roast oh yes good job you know good classic good guys. Sunday roast all the gravy sop it up lots of Yorkshires oh yes Yorkshire definitely stuffing and pigs in blankets oh. just basically a Christmas dinner yeah <laughs> exactly that with maybe a pizza for starter <laughs> yeah <laughs> And donuts would be it. Yeah. <laughs> Last Christmas, not the one just gone, um, because I was working. My um my mum was like, Oh, what do you want for Christmas dinner? And um roast duck, because I don't really like turkey because it's too similar to chicken. And she was like, Well, what do you want with it? And I was like, Yorkshire pudding, stuffing, pigs in blankets, uh, potatoes. She's like, What about veg? Mm, no. <laughs> No, no. Just a plate full of meat, potatoes, and Yorkshire pudding, please. <laughs> Don't want you any vegetables. Sorry? Don't want any vegetables. No, none of that green shit. No. <laughs> serves no purpose whatsoever. I, yeah. I love that. What legend. Yeah. What legend. And um, yeah. I feel I want to ask this question just because I think there may be quite a good answer. So... A little while ago, um, you may have seen the episode where Kelly poses the question, if you could have anything instead of nipples, what would it be? And it can't be Harry Bow fried eggs. <laughs> anything instead of nipples? Yeah. But... Donuts. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Little sugar ring donuts. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, like the tiny little donuts. That'd be great. Yeah, you, yeah, you know the ones. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the tiny ones. rings. 
you could yeah, you could just it. you could have the chocolate covered ones, the little sugar sugar donuts. Yeah. I've been licking my nipples all day. <laughs> Those are the ones that you go into Tesco's and you buy three different boxes for it's three for two, isn't it? And you could get yeah. like brownies and flapjacks and donuts yeah. and or exactly. cornflakes, crunchy chocolate covered corn cornflakes, that sort of thing. I love those. They're amazing. <laughs> So good. Imagine, imagine. I've actually had cravings this week for food. Have you? Yeah. Oh, that sounds like you, mate. I know. Apart from when Tom gave me my high day on Wednesday, I was miserable. <laughs> <laughs> I literally sat on the sofa moaning to Dan that I was so uncomfortable all day. <laughs> I'm was so it... full. <laughs> literally. Was it a high high? It was an extra 350 carb. Um, so I started at like half six and I was meant to train legs, got to the gym and I, I ate my pre and I was still so full. I walked on the treadmill for half an hour thinking hopefully it will work its way through. Yeah. Sat down on the edge of the treadmill to change my shoes and I was like, I can't train today. I'm going to vom. Yeah. <laughs> I left God. the gym, trained legs on Thursday instead and that was when I fucked my back up. Oh, it's a sign. Yeah. Yeah. It's a sign. Oh, so, dear. literally my check-in yeah. with Tom on Thursday went something along the lines he was like back to baseline diet and I was like thank god <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah. oh dear I, know, I always find it quite funny how like I always say I wish that my brain had the same appetite as my stomach can actually handle because yeah. in my head I'm like oh I'm gonna eat this I'm gonna eat this I'm gonna eat this and oh, I got a high day and I've been loading up for the show and and then you get halfway through and you're like Fuck. Yeah. I've still yeah. Got a lot of food to do it and I really can't handle it. <laughs> yeah. 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 But then my brain's still going, you hungry, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm really going to go, please fucking don't. <laughs> yeah, it's just so, crazy. Dan and I were having this conversation in the lead up to his show last weekend because he was, he started his car back Friday. And when he started the carb up for the week before, he really struggled digestively. And I was like, well, if you think about it, and we all do this, you've been on prep for X amount of time. Yeah, you may have had a couple of high days, but your stomach has shrunk. Your your digestive system will now be sluggish. Peristalsis will have yeah. slowed down because all it's been used to eating is dust. And all what do you do? Chuck a fuck ton of carbs and then wonder why you're bloated and you can't go to the yeah. toilet days it's like <laughs> how, how is bodybuilders that were so in tune with our body do we still do these carbs up so dramatically rather than trickling yeah. them in it's mad isn't it it's crazy yeah. oh yeah. Well, times never change no. No. <laughs> we'll never learn yeah no. that's it cool. i'm still i'll be I'm, I'm still kind of surprised whether people do the alcohol before um stage I, i've never done that before no, is that still a thing, is it? I think so, yeah. Some people still do it. Judging by PCA Southwest on Sunday, yes, it is still very much a thing. <laughs> the amount a few of... people. Well, I know there was a bar there, but the amount of tan-stained little bottles of wine around and about the bar would okay. suggest that, yeah, it's... It's still a thing. It's oh, still a well. Thing. There we go, then. <laughs> I did it the night before a show. I just gave myself the shit. So I was like, I'm not doing nice. that again. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm allergic to something. <laughs> if What's I, that? I'm, I think I have an allergy to something in wine. Oh, okay. I've, I've got a friend who's a master of wine and he, he suggested it might have been the sulfides. Because mm, um, yeah. organic wine doesn't do it quite as badly. But it's the worst thing for me because it makes me retain water. <laughs> so oh, yeah, I've got that shit. Yeah, yeah, I did it for my first show and then realised that it wasn't a good idea. Yeah, it's not the way. No. Not the way. Not the way. Not the way. Uh, what should we call it there, lovelies? Yeah. yeah my God. Yeah. Time flew there. <laughs> it did, didn't it? Thank you so much for joining us. Um, oh, thank you for having me on. It's been a blast. Dara, do you want to do the thing? Yeah, so thank you, for, obviously, for everyone's support and all. Uh, the continued listeners just remember to like comment subscribe and ring the bell 
Exactly. And uh, obviously weekly podcasts are coming up. Um, we've just released one with Mads, which we filmed a week ago. So make sure to go over to Spotify and YouTube to listen to that one. Um, and yeah, just continue on the story. Obviously, if anyone wants anything more or you want to uh, hear anything from us or more sort of specific topics, then again, just DM either Ro, myself or Kelly or the WPD podcast page and we will get them into our podcasts. But thank yeah. you for the support and we'll catch you on the flip side. See ya. See ya. <laughs> oh, I think, no. Hang on, cancel. Oh, see ya.